Hey everyone. So to wrap up this first part of our gas laws unit, I thought it would be useful to show you a really nice shortcut that you can use to kind of simplify all your calculations. Now, part of the part of the issue here sometimes is that there's a lot to memorize, there's a lot to keep track of, but what if I were to tell you that you could use one equation and that would allow you to solve most of the gas law problems that you'll ever see? Well, I'm about to show you why that's true. So we'll start here with Boyle's Law. Now, Boyle's Law, you may remember, um, talks about the relationship between pressure and volume at constant temperature. And that is an inverse relationship, which means that as the pressure increases, the volume will decrease and vice versa. So um, if in an equation you have two things that are constant, uh, that do not change. Essentially, you can cancel them out. And so that's what I'm going to show you here. Anytime you're dealing with any of these quantities and you're either not told about that quantity, like it's not mentioned, or you're told specifically that that quantity is constant, you can disregard it and essentially cross it out of your equation. So what you're seeing on the screen now is that you have a combined gas law equation set up here. And I'm going to show you how you can use this combined gas law equation to solve for Boyle's law. So if you're if you encounter a Boyle's law problem, um, you can essentially disregard the temperature. It doesn't matter what the temperature is, whether it's zero degrees or a thousand degrees. If the temperature is constant, it's going to cancel out, and you can disregard it in your equation. So I'm going to go ahead and cross out T1 and T2 right here because if they're the same, it doesn't really matter what they are. And what we're left with is our Boyle's Law equation. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. Now, you could remember that equation on your own, or you could just use the combined gas law equation to derive it. So now that you've kind of got an idea of what we're getting at, let's talk about the other two laws that we've discussed. So here we have Charles' Law, which talks about a gas at constant pressure and says that the relationship between volume and Kelvin temperature, remember our temperature always has to be in Kelvin, is a direct relationship. That is, as the temperature increases, the volume will also decrease. Um, this is what we see in a hot air balloon. So if we have constant pressure, then in our combined gas law equation that you see on the left here, we can cross out pressure. And what we're left with is the equation for Charles' Law. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Then we plug in our variables, we cross multiply, and we solve for whatever quantity we don't know. So again, we've used the combined gas law equation and just canceled out pressure, and we're left with the f familiar equation that we've used in the past. And finally, uh, the last law that we discussed was Gay Lussac's law, which talks about a gas at constant volume. So if you had like a super rigid container and you pumped a bunch of gas in, and you tried to heat it up, those particles would move faster and the pressure would increase. And so we have a direct relationship between pressure and temperature. And if we have constant volume, that means that if the volume doesn't change, we can cancel it out on both sides. And we're left with P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, which is the equation for gay lussacs law. So again, it may be really helpful for you to just use that combined gas law equation and just cancel out whatever's constant to solve these problems, especially as you go into your quiz this week and as you deal with gas law problems going forward. You need to know one equation, and that will help you solve anything that comes your way. We will add one more gas law after the break, uh, or maybe later this week, but um, this will allow you to solve anything you've seen up to this point. Hope that's helpful. Have a great day.